Good afternoon, my name is Heath. Today I'm going to show you our poor man's hydroponic garden that we're growing in a greenhouse in grow boxes filled with sawdust and sand. If you want to grow a lot of food, especially in a limited amount of space, let's get started. Let me preface this video by saying while we are growing in grow boxes filled with sawdust and sand, you can have these exact same results that you see here in your native soil. So long as your soil is not toxic, the condition of your soil is not important. Because like in a hydroponic system, we are going to provide each week all of the nutrients that these plants need. You don't have to have an expensive grow box filled with sawdust and sand to get these same results. So in my introduction, I referred to this as a poor man's hydroponic system. It is better known as a mitlighter garden. It gets the name Poor Man's Hydroponic System because of the way that we grow and provide the nutrients to our garden. A true hydroponic system is wildly expensive. The folks that set up a hydroponic greenhouse can spend a million dollars or more an acre to set up that system. They grow plants vertically when possible, as we do here. They grow them close together, as of course we are doing here and they provide all the nutrients that those plants need. They're measured, they're accurate in it, and the plants grow well because they have everything that they need. We're doing the same thing here with similar results. Of course, we're not going to produce nearly as much as a true hydroponic system can, but we have a lot less money in it. We have food that is healthy, and we're able to grow a whole lot of food in a pretty limited space here. If you're new to this, this is what is called a mitlighter garden. Let me take you on a quick tour and tell you a little bit about it as I walk around. So in our poor man's hydroponic garden, also known as a mitlighter garden, we provide all the nutrients that the plant needs in a small measured amount on a weekly basis. That is how it is similar to a hydroponic system. Other gardening methods, they put all of the nutritional requirements of the garden in at one time in the form of their compost and their manure. We do it in a small measured amount each week. And I don't think I mentioned to you, but this row has two different varieties of kale. It has my broccoli, cauliflower, look at that big old head of broccoli, two varieties of cabbage, celery that's starting to take off, and I think there's parsnips down there on the end. Got some heads of cauliflower coming in now. It won't be long and we'll be eating them. Now, another way that the Mitlider method differs from some of the other methods and how we're able to grow so much food is we utilize secondary edibles. All of the leaves on this plant, well, all of the plants in this row, from the kale, the broccoli, the cauliflower, the cabbage, all of those leaves are edible. You take a leaf or two off of every plant that has secondary edibles every week, and instead of eating one meal, for example, they had a cauliflower after three months of growing, we eat a leaf or two off of each plant each week, and we have months worth of food and a lot more meals that we're able to get. So if you're working with a limited amount of space and want to grow the maximum amount of food, learn about plants that have secondary edibles. Celery is one of those. You don't have to wait for the head to form, cut the head and be done with it. You can take a stalk or two off of each head each week and you can have food for months. I didn't discuss my first row. This is carrots, onions. These onions are spaced four inches apart in four rows. These are my pepper seedlings that I'm growing to go out into our soil garden. The weather is finally cooperating. These need to go outside here pretty soon. Okay, now back to poor man's hydroponic system. The Mitlider garden or the Mitlider method also takes advantage of growing crops vertically and maximizing the amount of plants that you can get within a given space. So my tomatoes here and they are three and a half feet tall maybe three feet up look how big that stem is and i really don't have here i know what i can use 
This is a piece of three quarter inch PVC. Look how big that stem is. These plants are healthy. Okay, let me get back on topic here. The tomatoes and the cucumbers that are in this row are grown nine inches apart. We're able to get away with that because of the way that we grow. If you look down the aisle here, you can see that the twine that we're growing up takes the shape of a V. As those plants grow up, they grow further apart. So these two tomato plants here are spaced 18 inches apart. The two on the opposite side are also 18 inches apart. In a 10-foot section of this garden, I can grow 13 tomato plants. A challenge to see you do that with a tomato cage. All right, past the tomatoes, we have green beans. These green beans are grown in a similar fashion, but we can grow a pole bean every two inches. And I don't have math done to tell you how many you can get in a 10-foot area, but it's a lot of green beans. Beyond the green beans are my cucumbers. They're really starting to set blossoms. And we've got a few female flowers with baby cucumbers on them already. We have leaf cutter bees in here. They're working hard. I'm sure that these are going to be pollinated and we won't lose anything. Three varieties of pepper here. And our Brussels sprouts. And here over my shoulder I'll show you quickly my leaf cutter bees. These things are gentle. They don't have a hive, so they're not protective. They're a little bitty, and they do a great job of pollinating. Everything that I grow here in the greenhouse, other than maybe the tomato, because it's so tiny, they're able to get into and pollinate. I love these guys. Okay, the last row I'm going to show you today is the potato. I've got three different varieties of potatoes in here. The section closest to me is probably about ready to harvest. Now I want to take the opportunity to reiterate, you don't have to have a greenhouse, you don't have to have a grow box filled with sawdust and sand to do this. You can do all of this in your own soil. We do have a soil-based garden that is just now starting to take off. Our weather is warm enough, the ground temperature is right, it's beginning to grow. So here in the next month or so, we're going to start including a tour of our soil-based garden as well. You don't have to put a whole lot of money into this to have an amazing garden and grow more food than you might believe is possible. Now, I'm going to shut off this camera here in a little bit, and I'm going to start harvesting. I'm going to show you how big this cabbage leaf is that's coming out today that's going to become food. If you want to grow a lot of amazing healthy food in a limited amount of space, this poor man's hydroponic system that we're using, also known as the Mitlider method, is a great way to do it. I encourage you to subscribe to the channel continue watching the videos and see what is possible with the Midlighter Method. There's a group on Facebook and I will put the link in the comment section. Nope. I will put the link in the description for you. You can find me and other accomplished Midlighter Gardeners there that are able to answer your questions. If you have any questions for me, I'd be happy to try to answer them for you. Leave a comment below. Thank you for watching. Happy gardening.